As we begin our mini unit on arcs and chords, we must first understand major arcs, minor arcs, and central angles, so that we can use that information to solve problems. Here we have a diagram with center point P. We also have points A, B, and C. Notice that points A, P, and B form a central angle. It's called a central angle because the vertex is the center of the circle. Here's the same diagram. Look at points A, P, and B. Notice that P is the center of the circle. Notice that we have angle A, P, B, and that is our central angle. The arcs on the outside of the circle are minor and major. Let's discuss a minor arc. Here we see the minor arc in orange. This would be less than 180 degrees. That is why it's called a minor arc. We use two letters to name it and we write it this way. Arc A, B. If there's a minor arc, there must be a major arc. In blue here, we see our major arc. Notice that as we look at our major arc in red, it is greater than 180 degrees. It passes through three points. We always name major arcs with three letters. Here we have arc A, C, B. Finally, as we talk about major arcs, minor arcs, and central angles, there's another case. What if our arc is exactly equal to 180 degrees? We call that a semicircle, shown in purple. It always has the diameter as its angle. We still must use three letters to name the semicircle. Here it's arc E, D, F. We've talked about naming arcs, we've talked about central angles, minor arcs, and major arcs. Please take a moment to study these key terms and pause the video. Go back and review the animations and let me know if you have any questions.